There we are. Okay, cool. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to our um, industry talk for today. Uh, we have a very special guest, Amir, and a very special topic. So um, classically, everybody thinks that when they graduate, they go work on uh, feature film projects or, um, I don't know, a game title or a or an animated TV series or what. But I'm just going to talk about a new world for you. He has worked on some world class um, video mapping uh, projects, which is a, a, a fascinating uh, area that is very related to what we do. And also, and also he will talk about his um, motion graphics um, experience and, and, and ideas and thoughts and also his journey in this field. So um, how do you want me to start? I mean, you want to open it up and then I play some of your works. Um, I think you can you could play the smart TV for, just to okay. warm just up. Yeah, to warm up. The, OK, so I'm going to play one of his one of the his fascinating one of the, his most fascinating projects that Amir has worked on. I got a sec. So I start with this smart TV project. So this is a um, video mapping project, isn't it, Amir? Yes. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, this is the first time that uh, Samsung wanted to launch their new brand. At the time, this was new. At the time, you know, um, no other com company had smart TV, and this was the beginning of smart TV in the world. So they wanted something really grandiose and big and something that would be um, deserving of the smart TV um, name and title. Wow. So that's why they came to us and uh, you can watch it and later I will have a lot to talk about because this was sure. yeah, a very, very challenging project to say the least. Okay. Uh, we do not hear the sound, do we? I'm in. I'm playing it with sound. Oh, oh okay. Says, it says couldn't share um, system audio. It's all right. I mean, it's it's almost done. Um, give me a second. Give me a second. I can retry to share it with. Oh, sorry. I should select include system audio. Can you hear the sound? Huh? Yes, now it's okay. Whoa,
Kurumlar yeni Samsung Smart TV'nin tanıtım gecesine hoş geldiniz. Yedi yıldır televizyonda dünya lideri olan Samsung, yeniliklerine 2013'te de devam ediyor. Bu gece hep birlikte Samsung Smart TV'yi daha yakından tanıyacak ve televizyonla yeniden tanışacağız. It's very interesting from the, that angle and the clothes, the guy is, so it, it looks like kind of, it, from, 3D and yeah, from different angles, it looks like differently. It's exactly, yeah. And that's the trick. I mean, how do you do this thing that it looks like, um, yeah, I mean, this effect yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. it. Yeah, right. that was much more visible, yeah. Yeah, like if, um, you know, I just wanted to ask you that if you would have standard in different spots in this venue, you would have seen different things and it seems yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, if, if it's a different, if the question, I guess your question is, is it a different experience based on where you are? Your location. Kind of, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's like kind of a two and a half, it's very interesting that I was talking about uh, camera projection today with my students in the third year. And also, yeah, it's some sort of like a hybrid between camera projection and you know, it, it's it, it has a lot of different things. Yeah. And uh, events management, timing. Yes, exactly. Only big companies like uh, Samsung can, can afford such a expensive yes, event. such as yes. Um, I mean, if you want to do what they did, and it's a it's a show. I mean, it's a spec spec spectacle. And actually, this event won the best event of the year award at uh, DSE in Las Vegas. Wow! It, it won the Apex. And our show was uh, ahead of BMW, uh, Ford, and Nike. So wow. they were like the second, third, and fourth uh, place. And we were, our show was the best. So we were one, one of the best. Which may sound sort of, sort of like obnoxious when I say it. But, you know, uh, when I heard it, I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't get surprised at all. Because it was such a painful project. It was so painstaking. It was so problematic that when I heard that he won, I was like, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised. I expected that because I don't know what those guys did, but we died on this project. Like, we, <laughs> we, we just, it was just horrifying. And uh, now, why? I mean, I guess everyone looking at this is like, well, it looked really simple. It was just easy. What were you talking about? The problem is when you do video mapping, you are using a video projector which pr projects a 2D image on a 3D surface. Now, what's the problem? If you have a surface like this, now you can see it on my hand that when I move my hand, you see light is... Uh, has a very different reaction based on the angle of my hand. So if I hold my hand like this, you see that the photons are not coming back to the camera. At, um, but when I do it like this, you see a very light and very, um, I mean, basically your video projector, if, if it hits a flat surface, it would come back and you see it like a film projector, like in a movie theater. But what if it's like this? your image will shear and get distorted along the surface. Mm. I'm sure you have seen this, that when light hits a curvy surface or an angled surface, it's, when it's not like this, when it's like that, it will hit this place and get skewed and distorted along the surface. 
mm. which is hugely trouble troubling. I mean, I wish I had some footage to you know to show you right now that what happens when that when that. But I guess everyone had some sort of experience of what happens when you have like a video projector that is not really um, at a ninety degree ang angle, yeah, true. and and you have a skewed image. So to to correct that, there are different uh, methods. One of them is if you have a three D set like what we did, you so start, should stop you here. Um, so just I just want to let everybody who just joined us because we have much more people have joined us in in few right last now? minutes. Okay. <laughs> few last minutes. So Amir is talking about video mapping, which means um, they build up um, large uh, scenes uh, with not a surface screen but in a very convoluted volumetric surface. Yes. And they project um, uh, motion graphics and 3D uh, generated or like um, all sorts of like visual effects and stuff on these surfaces. And they, from different an angles, they look 3D. And they look like, yeah. like, you know, it's not a surface, but it's an actual living experience. So, um, so, so how long did that take the, the, the Samsung project? Well, it took about 17 or 18 days. No, no, I mean the, the pre-production until the I think the pre-production, the production took about 17 days, but the pre-production was, I guess, about a month. I was not involved in pre-production, so I cannot be really specific. But I guess, but the you know the load was really in production, and we had like 91 different people working on different projects. So many of it was uh, cut down and shed by uh, Samsung team. Mm -hmm. So the the whole thing was about eight minutes, and they looked at it and they said, "Well, it's too long, it's too boring, and we don't want these parts. We want this part," and uh, it. What you see right now is like the best parts, although I guess there were some parts that they cut because it was scary. But they said, you know, our brand, we don't want to have like a sort of something, even if it's a little bit thrilling to be associated with our brand, we, we want everything to be upbeat and, you know, positive and this and that. Awesome. So what happened is, yeah, they took some of the, some of the parts. So um, yeah, 91 were, people. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, and 91 people? We're working on this project, but this means uh, from the set builders, the, the set that you saw where was a uh, 3D uh, set that was built, and they built it in a sort of like a studio, like a soundstage, and they, and they t took everything apart, and they took it to where it was supposed to be, and they reassembled everything, which was not, not a good thing. Because, you know, we had so many alignments and so many calculations and so, so, so many different things that, that didn't match really when they reassembled it. Actually, this was what you were talking about and I caught, it, <laughs> caught you in the middle. <laughs> so that's like the, the trick that like, so the light gets skewed yes. on, a, on an angled surface. On, a, on an angled surface, yes. And you as a video mapping artist, you find you measure the the actual surface and try to unskew it or or, or yes. what, what's the process can you let us know well the process is you know the first thing is you should have a 3d model inside your computer that you put everything on that and you render it so to begin with if you have let's say if you have something on a cube that looks like this right now if you look at my hand, my hand is skewed. My hand is distorted toward the camera. So if your motion graphics is skewed like this, and then if you project this onto a 3D surface that has the same, that has this exact measurements, exact volume, it would look right, and it would look ex um, like as if, as if it was on that surface because it would skew and distort in the right way. It would be, um, yeah, I think it's very hard to explain, or maybe most people got it and I'm just over explaining everything. Is but it like, like when you drive and then on, on 
you see in front of you on the on the streets it's written a stop but when you get to the stop sign it's just like it's a long yes. uh, a stretch stop. <laughs> yes. stretch exactly it's exactly the same thing so if you have a 3d model because this thing is stretched mm -hmm. and you project it on a surface that is the opposite i mean it, it would be skewed so so now these two images match and the elongated surface will be um, compensated by the short surface, which you rendered from. Mm. I don't know if it makes any sense, but you know, it let's does. say it doesn't, does it? <laughs> it does, it does, it does. It does? Okay. Yeah. So that's the thing. So you need to have the exact model. If you are projecting onto something like what we had in Smart TV, you have to build the exact replica inside your 3D modeling application, which we use Cinema 4D for this project, or 3D Max, we use Max and Cinema 4D. And uh, then you render it out from that, and then you project it onto your surface. Now, we had three different problems on this project, which was, you know, every single one of them was a nightmare on and of, in and of itself. Number one, our, you know, your uh, volume could be different from your 3D volume in your application. Let's say you, you build this model in Cinema 4D. Now you have remade the same thing in the real world, but they don't match. Now you may ask how different they could be. Pro the difference is based on how big your pixels are. So let's say if your pixels are a centimeter wide, that is the maximum of discrepancy between your 3D model and your real model. Now, on our project, because everything was huge, our maximum discrepancy measurement could have been about a centimeter or less. The problem was our set was 36 centimeters different in some cases, in some places, from our 3D model in some places and it was all over the place. It was not like it's just shifted upwards so we could just shift everything downward and it would be uh, compensated. It was like this part was like this, this part was like that, this part was like this. So it was all over the place. So what they did in the United States was that they would measure their 3D sets with lasers. And what they did in Turkey was that they thought that it looks right, so it, it is right and they measured <laughs> their eye, and we, which was horrifying. And if you look at our graphics, most of it is like line work, and those right. lines, lines are exactly on the, uh, yeah, exactly. And none of them were matching, none of it. Like everything was all over the place and it looked comical. So that was one problem. So our set was not, didn't match, was, was not even a, a close match to our 3D model. The second problem was, because the venue was this, was a very old place, we couldn't really <laughs> do what film crews do, which is like destroy the whole place, put whatever you want, wherever you want. So we were only able to put video projectors from very, very tight angles. And for that, we had to, first of all, the, the image that you saw is projected from six different video projectors. Wow. So that's not a single thing. It's like from six different projectors from six different places. 2K or 4K? I think it was, uh, I'm not sure. I think it was 2.5K, somewhere around there. I'm sure it was over HD, but how much? You were I renting exactly around remember. 20K images. Yeah, six different camera, yeah, six different projectors meant six different cameras, meant six times the rendering time and everything. Wow. So, uh, yeah. And problem number two was that uh, these really projectors had ultra-wide lenses on them, mm. which distort the image significantly. So even if our set was one-to-one, -one, even if our set was exactly the same thing, nothing would match because the image lens was not like a flat. Yes, the lens distortion would change. And it was not a um, sort of like a linear distortion. It was like very much distorted in the middle, then a little bit. It was just a weird, you know, distortion map that we, that I, you know, projected different grids on different things and measured how different um, lenses work on these things because it was not just even one lens. 
So the closest one was like something around 14. The ones in the behind, it was something around like, let's say, 20. And the ones in the back, the two ones, two, the, the two very far ones were like 60 or something. Mm -hmm. So it was telephoto, the last two ones. And um, the telephoto lenses were okay. They, they were not distorting everything that much, but the wide ones were nightmare. I called the manufacturer in Canada, it was Christie, which is like the most famous yeah. video projection man manufacturer. And I asked their engineers, I mean, do you know the distortion factor? And they said, uh, this is, I mean, why do you need this? And I said, because I'm doing something like this. But they said, we don't know it because no one even, no one asked. And I was like, this is, <laughs> like, what should I do? And I said, we don't know. I mean, we could just measure it for you, but it just, it's going to take time because we're not free. I mean, we have to set up systems and things, this and that and that. It's going to take months if we have free time. And I was like, I want this for tomorrow. I mean, this is like, <laughs> and so that was the second problem. The third problem, which is, again, is that light gets um, dimmed by the factor of, you know, the inverse square factor. So if you're here, the light is, you know, my hand right now, if it's not that much, it's not that bright. But if I get it closer to my, you know, softbox, now you see a very, very bright hand. The light is not, the, the light is... Decays. Uh, um, yeah, decays in the inverse square formula. So then you have a huge cube in the middle like we had the center of it which is closer to the projection uh to the projector it gets really bright but the, the the back of it it's really dim and it it's not that bright so what do you do how do you adjust that sort of uh, how, how do you compensate for that so you had a this map for make some part of the the image darker some parts brighter it, Exactly, and but, but how and and how do you measure that? How do you know how much fall off you had have, and how how should you do this? This is where I think I really, you know, what I knew in three D. First of all, I didn't know what to do. I was like, okay, even if I get the distortion and the set problems and all that, this is something that's going to take me years to find out how to do it and what. And I was actually one night I was so exhausted and I was so you know just tired that I I saw it in my dreams and that I was working again <laughs> on this project and I was pulling my hair and I didn't know what to do and and, and whenever I woke up it just hit me that the Z depth map that we have in a 3D software it does exactly this thing. The same thing, yeah. The same thing. So, so Angel, if, if you're... Angel talked to you about the Z-depth map. Exactly. Oh, so, Amir, so when I woke up, I was like, like yeah, Z-depth. <laughs> and I was like, yes, this is it. And then I went out and I rendered a few frames of the Z-depth. And then I put it on top of the image. And, I, and then I saw... It works, so it was like really a eureka moment, and it was really like awesome. I, I really thought I cannot get over this thing because it was really weird. Because you know that you have to have like a really dim um, image in here, but very bright in here, and it's a weird shape, so you don't know what to do with it. Sure. And the only way that you could do that was with a Z depth. It was just the only way. Is that the only? Is is this issue was? Uh, Existing in the uh, introduction of um, Galaxy S4 cell phones too. Do you want me to Not show really. that project? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. So, let, let, uh, hey guys, I'm going to show you another project by Amir, which is this one is as cool as the first one too. So, Oh, Armin Van Buren was invited. Yes, this was Armin Van Buren's uh, concert in Istanbul. Oh, oh. And so it was Armin's uh, concert in Istanbul, and yes. then uh, it was supported by Samsung. So it was sponsored by Samsung, and it was free to attend.
Oh, look at this stage. Awesome. Yes, it was huge. So, this was a project that has happened after the first part. So, you have the experience from the. Oh, let's see. By the way, we didn't make these parts. I mean, this is just his uh, own team. So all the um, graphics of the concert were provided by his own team. Oh, was he? Oh, wow. Yeah. It's the next level of what we do. Like, you know, you go out of the monitors and, and cinemas and you turn it into a, yes. a live experience. Exactly. With the magic of light and projection. And... So. How many projectors were here? Well, I, see, I can see that there are many. The I, and there were, I guess, six again. But um, for this project, we didn't have the same kind of, you know, problems that we had for the um, smart TV. Because, you know, we could project it from one direction, which was from the, um, we call it, I don't know what they call it, projection tower or something. They called it something that I don't exactly remember. But it was like an array of six different uh, video projectors projecting images onto that set. Mm -hmm. The problem with this one was not the distortion or things like that. It was, uh, again, the inverse square law. We had to sync two, four like uh, video projectors that were, you know, playing back ex exactly at the same time. And the lumen of all of them had to be, I mean, like, mm, here's the thing. If we wanted to use two projectors, the image wouldn't have been as bright or as vivid. I mean, the, the distance between the, um, the projection tower and the set was so much that there is no way that any video projector in the world would be able to provide that much lumen mm. to make that thing, you know, really shine and, you know, be um, what we wanted. So when we tested with three projection, uh, with, with three projectors, it was so desaturated and dimmed that we said that this is not going to work. So we added... Um, three more and um, we had enough lumen that it was bright and really the quality was good. Lovely. I, so we talked about a lot of technicality in video mapping. I'm, I'm, I hope everybody has taken uh, some ideas what it looks like. We really appreciate any project at Digital Design who you might be interested to do video mapping. So like there are plenty of different buildings with different, different shapes that you can measure and project your 3D, um, you know, arts uh, overnight for, and, and we have, uh, as you have seen, we have a good um, amount of like um, high quality uh, projectors. But I mean, you are a, an, a very good um, motion graphics artist too. I would like to show um, some of your works, if you mind, on, on yeah, motion sure. graphics. So, um, because like, Many of our students might end up being a motion graphics artist. So it would be lovely if you let us know about um, this kind of market and how to get sure. into and like what skills might be required to be a good motion graphics artist. So I'm going to show you, um, everybody. So like this is a CCTV news opener. Is it the Chinese channel? CCTV? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I guess some of your students are uh, from China, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, many of them. Many of, many of our 
but we have very amazing students from China actually, very talented. Great. Great. So I guess they have seen this in、uh, China.、Uh, okay, so they've they've seen your work. So already. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, so that that was the the warm tone, and then there's another one. Oh, look at this. This one has. That was a that was a oh sorry is it coming with sound? Um, it's just the music. I don't think it has like sound effects or、um, the sound let's, of you know. Let me share、internet. my screen one more time with the sound included. Okay, so yeah, yeah, it has sound actually. If that's the if this is a very complicated motion graphics as I can see. There's a、mm, ah, multi dimensions, was... multi layers. You were saying it was. Over two thousand eight hundred layers in After Effects. Oh, two thousand layers. Did you get Epiphany from Angel to Bob? Yes.、Uh, um, what, what was that? I think. Get Epiphany from Angels again. <laughs> no, no, not for this one. Is that the one you see in the back as well? Be- because the sound of music is re- really loud, I I don't hear your、uh, oh. comments. Uh, uh, my question was,、um, are these? So let me just turn off the sound, if you mind. Yeah, sure. So so not only the opener was your work. Uh, let me clarify. I was not the senior designer nor the senior motion graphics designer on this particular work. I was the, the designer on the other one, on、um, the、uh, evening version. Yes, this is Esteban Diacono's Diacombe or Diacono. I guess I, I,、uh, I'm sorry for not remembering his name right, but he was the senior designer on that one, on the main version, the blue version. And these ones.、Um... You know, it's not only just the opener, but also they, they. We provided、uh, the whole package. The the whole、oh, I see. So it just like goes with the whole package. Exactly. Like this, this like circling thing here, in the background. The, everything. Yes.、Oh, so、see. you see these graphics down here that are like this, like the the lower third, the、uh, transitions.、Um, Weather, weather map,、uh, yeah, weather programs and that's a massive、uh, amount of work.、Mm. Exactly. So the broadcast, it's called the broadcast package. So you provide everything that a、um, TV station, TV channel needs, and、uh, we pro- I think we provided、uh, the whole package for two TV state, two CCTV、um, channels, if I'm not mistaken.、Mm. Lovely, and I see that you have created a lot of informatics. Oh, is that the right name? So, like, kind of these kind of motion graphics. Well, it has you know because this is such a new field, we don't have really.、Uh, oh, these are cute words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so、uh, we we don't have really like、uh, names that are in a dictionary or written in a stone or something.、Um, Every different company calls them different things. Some people call it video explainer. Some call it, you know, infomercial. Some call it, you know, different names. Because you know, the whole thing is so new that even the words are not really、um, generalized or accepted among everyone. So even the word, the motion designer. I mean, some people call it motion graphics designer. Some people call it motion graphics. Some people call it motion designer. So,、um, so in the process of creating such a thing,、uh, you not only think about the、um, kind of、um, oh, sorry, yeah, not only think about <laughs>、uh, the the kind of the design side of it, but also like how information could be read and how. Yes.、Uh, so that that that's part of your job too, or someone else. 
Well, as you a know, designer, generally speaking, yeah. uh, th there's a hierarchy. Um, um, here. There's a yes. There's a creative director, art director, and motion designer. So in some projects, you are the art director of motion design, as well as uh, motion designer. And uh, yeah, the the thing is, you have to be able to communicate information clearly and easily. So, I know, yeah, I know that you have substantial um, social science studies, uh, as as far as I know. Did it help for that? That like you, you create better, like kind of. Well, I wish it did, and for a very very long time, I hoped that I could get something out of it and put it in my work. But I really cannot say that it had that mm -hmm. much of an effect maybe it was maybe it was subconscious that i don't know of yeah. but um if if what you're saying is that if i consciously knew something that i read in philosophy or psychology and it helped me design a better image mm -hmm. i really cannot say that's the case i guess if someone wants to um study something it should be graphics more than anything and uh aesthetics basically like if someone knows okay. the basics of art and how art works and how, you know, what is um, contrast and flow and, you know, all those things, it, that would be way more helpful than studying, you know, psychology as I did or, you know, this philosophy. Looks, yeah, this looks like a very smart simplicity. So it's I, I yeah. <laughs> that moving from a very complex project like this to a simple project like this. Uh, some people think that the level of the work here is less, but actually it's, to yeah. make it function well, that's a lot of job. Yeah, Leonardo da Vinci has a very famous quote. He says, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Mm -hmm. So if you can communicate something quickly and easily and make it look effortless, it means there has been a lot of effort into that. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, if something looks effortless, it means there has been a lot of effort. Yeah, that's what we discuss in um, in the storytelling side of our uh, of the projects to students. That, like, you know, make your story work so hard on your stories that they look so easy. effortless. Yeah, it's effortless. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Yeah, I mean, there are graphics in here that maybe could have improved, maybe could have been better, or maybe I I feel like, well, if I had like 10 more days or two more days, I could have worked on this and that. By the way, the entire design of this project was done by an artist in England. It was Simon, um, God, I forgot his name, but the design was done by Simon, not our team. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to clarify that the credit goes to him because it was not my work, it was his. Great, great. So, um, if so, so, let us know about the if if any one of our students might be willing to consider motion graphics or video mapping as a future job. What they should do? Is there any? Is it like a software skill? Is it something related to um, some sort of knowledge? So what, what sort of skills needs to be acquired? The skill set that they need to have basically to join a motion graphics team. Well, um, as you know, the name suggests graphics and the graphic design is the first thing to know. So um, I don't know if most of your students, I don't, um, do you have like, just uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess most of your students are familiar with cinema history and Alfred Hitchcock yes, and yes. Uh, there, yeah, there are okay. a lot of, there are a lot of uh, theory classes that um, some finds it painful really? however <laughs> we keep insisting that they are the core concepts yes in the uh, in, in your art creation so take them serious work on that take your theory and you know classes um, you know, in more, work more on, on what they're saying and, and appreciate it more because that you will end up, you know, using that knowledge somewhere. Yes, absolutely. What I'm about to say is right now is exactly referring to what you said, which is um, 
there is a gra great graphic designer called Soul Bus, and he designed the titles of uh, Hitchcock's Vertigo and North by Northwest and some other movies. And here's the cool thing. He didn't have any computers. He didn't have any softwares. He had nothing. He only had, you know, papers. And what I'm trying to say is that the, if you know the core concepts, if you know how, uh, how to make something look great, you don't even need a computer as he didn't. And the title design for North by Northwest is so good that about 50 or some odd years later, David Fincher used the very same concept for his movie Panic Room. Yeah, true. So if you look at the title design of North by Northwest and then take a look at, you know, David Fincher's Panic Room, yeah, the Panic Room looks more modern and polished. more polished and, yes, more uh, 3D and everything. But it's the exact same idea and same thing. And he even said it that this was sort of like his homage to Hitchcock because he really loves Hitchcock. So um, having said that, um, you should know your tools, which is, you know, for if you want to do 3D uh, motion graphics, it's mostly Cinema 4D. Like right now, it's the dominative software all, of, all across the world. I work with people from Pakistan to Spain, China, uh, Argentina, um, Brazil, everywhere. It's this a standard software, 3D software for motion graphics everywhere. So mm -hmm. I've never came across a, a 3D motion graphics designer who said, no, I worked with, I don't know, Maya or... Uh, there might be some people, I, mean, I don't know, but, um, but it's not like the main software. And for uh, compositing, it's After Effects. So no matter where you go from um, Pakistan to United States is Cinema 4D and After Effects. True. And, uh, and if someone wants to, you know, do their own layout or do their own, you know, style frame design, it's for Photoshop and Illustrator. Or... You could say, say and suggest, you know, affinity photo and uh, designer, because I know you have an, you know, affinity for affinity. So, yeah. Yeah, two, two. Great. So, um, we have about 10 minutes for Q&A. Um, so, let me ask you, I mean, uh, like, do you have anything else for our students? Do you have any other suggestions or any like kind of before we move to the q a section uh well just two things i guess i should mention and that's the if you know graphic design if you have a very good solid foundation of graphic design try motion graphics i think you will enjoy it and i think you will um really be fascinated by it it's lovely yes and uh i guess you and the second thing is, I guess there will be a lot more motion graphics in the world in the next few years or yeah. probably for decades to come. And the reason for it is, well, this is where psychology comes in, by the way, is because of our attention span. And uh, right now we live in the world saturated by media, like overtly saturated by media. And everyone wants your attention. Instagram wants to take you to their platform, Facebook, YouTube, all of them want you to spend more time on their platform and they want your attention. So here's the thing. If you, I mean, there are like, I don't know, 10 different types of contrast, like contrast of value, contrast of hue, contrast of saturation, contrast of shape, contrast of texture, all of that. If you put all of them and focus all of them on something on the image. Like, let's say it's my hand in here and it's this, like, I don't know, this sort of circle. Right now, everyone would look at this. Of course, they would look at me because I'm a human being. Humans, we have a tendency to look at a face. So a human being always will win the contrast war. But if you move something around, the moving, sub, the moving object will always attract a lot of attention and it will break all other rules and the highest amount of attention will go to something that's moving. So the moving object will get your attention no matter what. So it doesn't matter how much contrast something else has, the moving object will get your attention. And I believe that's why we will move into a world that everything should move 
Why? Because they want your attention. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have logo motion. I mean, if you receive a logo, if you, if you receive a, an email from a major company right now, there is an animated GIF on top, which is their logo. And first it animates and then turns into their logo. And then you will see the email and all that. I believe this is a trend that will be, you know, exploited and it will explode. And uh, this is just the beginning. I mean, last year in the entire world of graphics, what was the number one trend? Mm -hmm. Logo motion. Mm -hmm. So even, this even, is, in, yeah, even in a very small market like New Zealand, uh, I can see that we see a, a surge in motion graphics jobs and, and there are yeah. a, lot of, a lot more positions getting available every day. So it's a very rich um, kind of um, market. And it's the beginning of it. Yeah. You know, if you look at animation or visual effects, it has been saturated because it has been around for a long time. Mm. But because motion graphics design market is new, there, it's not that saturated. It's not like being overly saturated by, you know, a number of talents who have been graduating all, you know, these years. So I know I sound like a, you know, secondhand car salesman that's trying to push motion <laughs> graphics. <laughs> a bit of a picture. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Especially with the picture. Yeah. And uh, but I believe if you are a graphic designer, I, it doesn't take lo long for you to learn, you know, the basics of animation because, you know, motion, does, motion graphics is animation plus graphics. It's just that simple. So just you, you just if you know graphics, you just need to learn the basics of animation like over um, like, you know, follow through overlap, all that, you know, stuff, which I'm sure, you know, most of your students have already learned it yeah. at your university. Yeah. So, so they are, you know, halfway there. They just need to learn, you know, After Effects or, you know, well, I would recommend After Effects more than anything else. Although I, I'm not a, you know, <laughs> I'm not a such a big fan of it, but, uh, but it's what it is. It's, it's the industry too. Okay, great. Yes, it's the best. Amazing advice. So we have eight minutes for a couple of questions. Uh, feel free to type your questions in the chat box or open your mic and ask Amir uh, your questions. Anyone? Hey, there, Amir. So I want to say, uh, I want to say that you, that one of your motion gra graphics, they're they're awesome. I want to say that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so the question I want to ask is that in terms of video projection and stuff. Would that also complement well if you're doing a bit of green green screen work and would there any were there any problem problems involving following video projection and, and green screen work? Um, so you mean you want to have someone right in front of green screen and then you want to project that image onto something? Yep. Is that the question? Uh, that's the question. Yeah. Um, so that would be real time solutions like um, right now. Well, that's a very good question because, you know, we are moving toward, you know, real time engines, Unity 5 and all that. And I'm sure that's the future. And um, th um, theoretically, there should be no problem. So if you have something that can generate images at the speed that you want, and you can feed that to multiple projection, um, um, the multiple projectors, and you can map them onto your surface, yeah, you could use green screen. You could use um, real-time um, models, whatever you want. We actually did that, but... Um, I'm not sure if I have the video or something. Um, here's you know one little note about Dreambox, the company that I worked with. Uh, they we were doing like eight months of R and D every year and four months of pro um, projects or something. The reason was we wanted to be ahead of everybody else and we wanted to have something to offer that nobody else had. And what you asked right now was really interesting. If you c could really pull that off, uh, I think you would be ahead of everybody, everyone else. Yeah, Johnson is is a is a good researcher. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Johnson, for asking yeah. that. Okay, you're any, welcome. Uh, any other questions? I just want to add one thing, and that's uh, about uh, video mapping. And uh, sorry, my dog, you know, Jackie is. <laughs> like, I don't know what he's scared of, but he's just <laughs> morning. Uh, you need two softwares. One of them is called Mad Mapper which you use, it's like UV mapping, but you take your um, video 
and you change it and it, it does something like UV mapping. So you can adjust your video and put it on your you know, 3D um, surface. So let's say if it, was like, um, if it was like this, you could just adjust it and map it onto your um, volume. And the other thing that you need is called watch outs, uh, data tons watch out, because there are so many times that you need like five, six, 10 different video projectors and watch out allows you to have multiple streams. So let's say you have something like this and it has two facets. So you need one video projector for, for a video projector for here and one for here. And you need two video streams streaming simultaneously. It's not just one video stream. Time and for that, you need, yeah. yes. So they have to be synced and you need two of them. A watch out allows you to do that. Perfect. So I think we have time for one last question. Or maybe two. Uh, Ryan asks, does motion graphics offer more long-term jobs compa compared to film? Um, that's a very difficult thing to answer right now because you know the market hasn't been really um, that solid. I can tell you that the market's not as, as saturated as film. And I can tell you that you are more flexible because you know you can do freelance jobs and you don't need a giant team to do many freelance jobs. Yeah. You know, it's not like VFX that you need a gigantic, you know, 60 different people. And but, you're, you're, not, you're not just working for uh, film companies. Your outcome can be can be, you know, taken by uh, web companies. Um, yes, yeah. exactly. Video on demand, um, you know, platforms and many more. I mean, right now there is a very good market for digital medias like Instagram, um, YouTube, yeah, yeah. all of that. Sure. Um, any other questions? Thanks, Ryan, for asking. Oh, I also have another question questions. From a sure. related to motion graphics, so in terms of motion graphics, it can also correlate co 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 correlate well with games and films as well. Because I, because I had a look at one, one up, upcoming game called Cyberpunk twenty six seven seven, and it has a lot and it has a lot of motion. So it has a lot of motion gra gra yes. graphics. Sure. graphics yes. Yeah, sure. Into it, so so I was wondering if if motion graphics doesn't always have to relate to ad, ad doesn't always have to relate to advertising. Uh, well, you know, uh, there are so many different things that you can do if you're a motion graphics designer. One of the things that I did recently was for uh, the health ministry, and it was a sort of like an infomercial. It was a um, video explainer for COVID-19. Mm. So, you know, they wanted something uh, for uh, workers who are not, you know, they, they cannot really read like two pages of information. So they wanted something that could um, communicate the messages of the health ministry really fast. And uh, I made a 60 second video and I was really surprised because, you know, the, um, the d different people were sending it to each other through WhatsApp, you know, and all other, you know, platforms. And it was really satisfying because, you know, for a very long time, I thought, you know, my job is worthless. Not that in a sense that it is, uh, but I thought, you know, my job is something sentimental and, you know, it's really modern and, you know, it doesn't have any place. Like if there, if you were in a situation of a doomsday, if it was Mad Max, you know, I will be the first one to get eaten because, you know, I cannot do anything. And when this happened, I realized, and when I saw the impact, when I saw that it could actually do so many good things in a society, it could really raise awareness about many different things. I was like, okay, maybe I'm not that worthless. You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe I could do something, if which is you know, good. Uh -huh. And right now, if you look at the uh, website of WHO or CDC, the United States you know, Center for Disease Control, most of their information is uh, graphics or motion graphics. I, I think they really realize that this thing can communicate your message way better than your text. So one last question from Carmen. Thanks. Besides uh, graphic design. Thank would, you for your question. Yeah. Besides graphic design, would you say product design and industrial design could be a part of motion graphics? Um, you know, there are so many different things that all, you know, um, all subcategories of design share, like, I think in your university, if someone studies industrial design or production design or production design, there are so many different things that they read that are the same. 
like contrast is contrast value contrast is value contrast you know contrast grouping or, or, or let me say value grouping is value grouping so it doesn't matter what you really study if, if you really want to become a motion graphics designer you can and if you have a background in art i think you are far ahead of everybody else perfect great thank you so much amir uh, i really appreciate it. i know that it's a terrible timing over there it's in the middle of midnight and I really appreciate the time that you um, allocated and I and I hope our students have enjoyed and have learned a lot of things from you thank you so much and thank you thank you for this opportunity I really am grateful and I hope it has been um, useful I don't know how well I can communicate what I have in mind but <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was lovely. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. And see you next week. Bye, Amy. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks. Thank thanks, both of you, though. Thanks. Bye. Look at all these thanks that are showing up. <laughs>